Ooh, slimy. Yeah. Wow. So they were both girls? No, one was a boy, one was a girl. Okay. Well, okay. Amazing. <laughs> oh my god. I cannot believe it finally happened. Oh, I know. Seven years we've been going, or I have been going to the cabin with the purpose and intent of catching salmon. king salmon in the fall. Uh -huh. This year I finally made it happen. I don't know if it was luck, skill, the timing was right. I don't know. I tell him every single year when he goes on this fishing trip, bring me home salmon, <laughs> catch a bunch. And this year when he called and said he did, I was like, shut up. So excited. Yep. Oh, so excited. So we are going to prep it to um, can. Yes, Reserve. we're going to do it a few different ways. There's not a lot of YouTube videos on canning king salmon. King salmon is not like when you picture like Alaskan salmon and it's pink and red and like that vibrant bright color. Now king salmon is a very white a white meat. Um, yeah. So there's not a lot of videos on it. Some people even said, yeah, you probably don't want to can it. Oh, really? One, one person on our Facebook page did, yeah. Oh, why? They said it's just way better fresh. Oh, really? Okay. Which can I do feel um, like we should eat some tonight fresh, so just pan <laughs> fry it and yeah, like we should. I mean, you just caught a salmon, we should eat a, yeah. a piece fresh. So, we did re watch quite a few of the videos from Eric and Ariel, Simple Living Alaska, just to try to get some inspiration from you know, how do they do their brine, how do they do their smoking. And so we're gonna try to take some inspiration from them. This is coming off nice and easy. Is that the biggest fish you've ever cut up in your life? I, yeah, I think yeah. so. I've caught salmon before when I was a kid, when I was little. My grandparents had a cabin on the Pier Marquette River, mm -hmm. just outside of Baldwin, Michigan. And that was my first one I ever caught. I was probably maybe 10. It took me forever to bring it in because I didn't have like proper like gear for catching salmon. It was just like my normal fishing pole that I would go fish in the creek at home with. Uh -huh. And uh, it swam way, way downstream, got tangled up in these branches. And I was out there by myself. And I remember I was like yelling for my mom and dad. I'm like, come help, come help. So do you want me to put these in here? Yeah, so what we decided to do, we're going to do two different batches. One batch we're going to just salt brine. We're going to add about, so for two fillets we're going to add about a half a cup of salt and we're going to let that sit until tomorrow morning. Then the salt will be rinsed off. The other batch is going to be a mixture of brown sugar and salt curing. And that batch will also sit until tomorrow. Then we're going to rinse it all off. Then that batch is gonna go on the smoker. We're gonna smoke it for a little while. And then it'll all get canned separately, of course. So Rachel's doing the one with just salt and the intent of this batch is for salmon patties. So no sugar, no stuff like that mixed in. We're just using like real salt, not any curing salt or pickling salt, and I don't know if there's a right salt to use for this process. I'm just working that salt into the fish. 
And you said this draws out the moisture? Mm hmm It'll make the, the meat will really firm up a lot. Oh, okay. For this one, I'm... Same thing, about half of a cup of salt and about two cups of brown sugar. We, this was kind of inspired or stolen from Eric and Ariel again. I think it's pretty common though. Yeah, it yeah. sounds like they they learned it from fellow Alaskans. So. Mm -hmm. My salt scrub is done for the day too. <laughs> it always messes with my cubicle, cuticles doing this. When you dig your hand in salt like that. All right, so these will go out in the fridge, out in the garage until tomorrow morning. We'll pull them out, we'll rinse them, and then store them in the fridge probably until sometime tomorrow after dinner, after work. And then we'll throw them on the smoker and then we'll get them canned up tomorrow night. Sounds good. It'll give you time to decide if we're using pints or half pints. Right, right. And But stick around because we pulled off a couple slices and we're going to pan fry it up and taste it. Right. We're just going to cast iron skillet these fillets. And for seasoning, we are trying something different, something new. When we... We're at our butcher shop recently, which is about, uh, I don't know how many miles west of here. It takes us a while to get there. Jerome Country Market is what it's called. They have this seasoning at the counter called gunpowder seasoning and Rachel tasted it. And they had like a sample thing, like you could put some on your finger and try it. And she immediately said, okay, I'm buying some of this <laughs> and ran back into the store to find some of it. It's kind of like salting, like seasoning salt, kind of. Okay, I'm not even gonna lie. I had that little piece that he was cooking <laughs> off camera and I was just like, oh my God. <laughs> it tasted just like, I don't know, crab, lobster, it, oh. I melted some, a little dab of butter and put some of our fermented honey garlic sauce in it. Oh, oh my gosh. It is so, so good. Mm-hmm but I will take a bite for you guys on camera. It reminds me of lobster or crab meat. Mm. It's a very, very neutral. It doesn't taste like, doesn't, it doesn't taste like pink salmon at all. No, not at all. Oh my goodness, it is great. I mean, look at that piece of meat. Can you guys see that? Is it coming up? Oh, sorry. <laughs> coming up on camera? <laughs> it's always oh. going to focus on your face or try to. Oh. They're really good. I'm in heaven. <laughs> <laughs> I said off camera, oh my gosh, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. This is like amazing. Can you dip it in the butter? Mmm. Mmm. So good. <laughs> I just am so excited. Like, I grew up having salmon patties a mm. lot. It was like a staple recipe in our house. And um, I've, I've made it a few times, you know, since mm. we've been married. But it, I'm so excited to just have our own salmon. We finally did it. <laughs> I can't wait. Oh. I was picturing in my head of last year when we went scouting and you you talked about coming salmon fishing with me this year. Mm -hmm. I was picturing you in the river. Oh my goodness. Fighting one of them fish. Oh, no way. <laughs> I can't wait to see your video. Like, he told me about it, but I wasn't there, so. Yeah. It's very good. Oh my goodness. 
Very good with the butter. Mm -hmm. Just dipping it in butter like it was a crab cake. Yeah. So this is the batch that we're gonna be smoking. Early this morning when I got up, I took both batches out of the fridge and rinsed them. I basically put them in the sink, tons and tons of water, scrubbed between my hands each piece to try to get any last bits of like salt or even some sliminess. The skin can be kind of slimy. As you can see, I got my smoker rolling. We're going to drop these on probably on the top rack here. So before I put them on, I'm gonna use a little avocado oil and just kind of coat the racks just to make sure when I go to take these off, they don't all stick. So we'll probably leave these on the smoker for one, one to two hours maybe. I don't want them to necessarily cook. I just want them to take on the smoke flavor. My smoker I have set to the lowest temperature possible, which for this this grill, this is the Pit Boss Pro Series. I don't remember the size, but the lowest temperature that it goes is 108, which should be a, a pretty decent temp for this. about an hour and a half. The fish is definitely not cooked. I did not want to cook the fish. I just wanted to smoke the fish and they smell awesome. It's time to shut down the grill. Let's bring these inside. Get Rachel to come in the kitchen and help us and we'll get to canning. Look at that, beautiful. I wanna eat it. It's not cooked I all know. the way. <laughs> we did do some research while we were away. And you can can fish in pints. I didn't think you could, but he did the research. National Center for F Food Home Preservation. All right. Well, supposedly they're the boss. And you guys know how well I listen to them. But I, I, will, I will if it lets me get away with more. <laughs> <laughs> with more? Yeah. So we decided we're going to do the plain brine, no brown sugar, and pints because those are for salmon patties. Salmon patties. And the smoked ones we're doing in half pint jars because those will be for treats. Ow. Oh, Whoa. did you get yourself? No. Okay. <laughs> Almost. I stabbed myself. And I, I'm assuming. Um, I've only ever canned fish once before, and I did, like, I had a bunch of frozen fish um, that we were just weren't going through in time before, like, threat of freezer burn. Um, but one inch ahead space is what we're filling the jars to. Oh, and we're putting some garlic Oh, in. yeah, I forgot the garlic. Yes. I'm not going to do all these with garlic just because I don't know how I'm going to like it. We have some fresh garlic cloves, and then we also have some... Fermented honey garlic. Garlic fermented in honey, yes. That's what I was trying to say. Yeah, I knew. So we'll do some like that too. Otherwise, keeping it pretty basic, so it's super versatile for however we want to use it. Um, and this is a pressure canning recipe.
Alrighty, we got our pressure canner with about an inch or so of water in there, inch and a half. Putting on our big pints of, look at that, so nice, so exciting, of our plain king salmon. And then we might need to go two layers in with our pints. So let me get a couple of these in. All right, Todd grabbed me. That's the nice thing about my tall all-American canner. So if you're just thinking about getting into canning, definitely go ahead and get something that's tall, whether it's an all-American or a Presto, just so you can double stack. Because pressure canning, almost everything takes a long time. And so if you're gonna run your canner for that long, you might as well really fill it up. Do we really want to make a third layer? I think we do. So he's just getting me another rack to layer it on there, and I can put these last five jars in. Took me a minute to find it. If you ever need more of these, they sell them on Amazon. I'll try to remember to put a link down in the description for you guys. Um, I'm just keep Vaseline, oddly, in my pantry for this purpose. <clears throat> All American canners don't have a rubber gasket. They're metal on metal seal. So you, um, when you first get it especially, you'll need to, and it's like such a super light layer that you shouldn't be able to see it. Um, you definitely don't want any gunks built up on it. And I just run that around. And I probably, now that I've been using this so long, I probably only do it maybe once every 10 times I use it. It's kind of just once it feels kind of dry to me. And then you do it again on the inside lip of your canner. And then we are going to turn up the heat because pretty much it's cold food. I mean, the fish right out of the freezer or the fridge, the smoke, even though it was smoking, it wasn't necessarily hot food. Um, so we're just starting with cold water and a cold canner with cold jars. Now I'm gonna wait for this to vent, which is when visible air and steam is coming out of your canner you can hear it you can see it usually and it's just psh. when that happens you start a timer for 10 minutes once that 10 minutes is done i'm going to put on my pressure weight some of you may have jigglers um, but my pressure weight will go on i'll bring it up to 10 pounds of pressure and then we will start our timer for 100 minutes 100 minutes 